High tech, low tech, or no tech. Through our hobbies and our passions, the geek comes out in us all. The world's a geekdom. I am a geek and I'm proud of it. Geeks. Geeks unite. Well, let's get those nerds! Nerds! No! Did you just call me a nerd? Not all geeks are nerds. Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. What are we waiting for? <laughs> and now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. button for the first time in my life. Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. I am your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. For those of you who are veterans of Geek Therapy Radio, I guess I haven't been on for that long for you to be true veterans of the show. I've been on for a couple years now, but you're used to hearing me pre-recorded. If you're listening right now, March 2nd, 2019, Texas Independence Day, which we'll get into in a moment, you are listening to Geek Therapy Radio live, live, live. And I'm interested to talk to you if you care to call up here and tell me your geek thing, tell me your hobbies, tell me your passions, tell me whatever you're into. Let's talk about it because one of the main goals... For Geek Therapy Radio, by the way, the phone number is 713-212-5950. 713-212-5950. We're live until 11 p.m. Central Time here in Texas. One of the aims of Geek Therapy Radio, because this is a new, a new time for me also, this is the third show, I think, that I'm at uh, 10 p.m. here. I used to be on at midnight for the vets, Geek Therapy, Geek Vets, who realize... Uh, this is the new time slot, 10 p.m., but this is the first time that it's been live. And I did not know that I would have how many cameras are pointed in my face right now? Yeah, well, three, but three. There's three cameras in my face right now. There's a big light in here. I didn't know that it was going to be all of this, which is fine. I mean, I wanted it. I was going to bring my iPad and just kind of stream it. Yeah, Joe, you can this hop on here if you deal. want. This is a, look, you, you got a fan base out there. We got to cater to. That's right. So we're, what are we streaming on, Joe? We're streaming on Facebook Live. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Now look, we're on KPRC AM, but we're also simulcasting this very broadcast. Live streaming. To KTRH News. Really? Just Not, build up the pressure. Just add, keep stacking 945 it. The Buzz <laughs> FM. And Ooh. Sunny nine nine one FM. We're we're on all these we're on all these social accounts. The social accounts. I'm not I'm not taking over the airways of. Well, uh, it, you maybe know, I may have pushed time. the wrong button. I'm plugging in a lot of things over here. Joe is, this is yeah, not my forte. I'm not going to lie. There's just wires running around all over the place. But yeah, Geek Therapy Radio is all about celebrating the inner geek in all of us. And as I say, the motto of the show is that we are all geeks about something. You may be driving around thinking, I'm not a geek about stuff. I like muscle cars and working out and building backyard rock. If you build backyard rockets, you are a straight up geek. I'm sorry. If you're building backyard rockets, invite me over. I would like to see that. That'd be really cool. Actually, call up the show. If you're into something weird like that, a crazy geek thing like that, call the show, 713-212-5950, and let's talk about that. But... We're all geeks about something. You driving around, you listening at home, wherever I'm catching you right now, you are a geek about something. And if you're not, if you don't think you are, let's find out what you can geek out about. The show is called Geek Therapy Radio, so there's geek therapy. When you find a new passion or new hobby, uh, it can help you through some dark times. Not just, you know, hardcore depression, but... Even if it's just doldrums of life, I know a lot of people out there, they, we work. We work nine to five. We have our normal jobs. And then maybe it's not something that we, we dreamed of as kids, that we wanted to do as kids. But it's something we do to pay the bills. And I'm not even saying that we hate the job. But it's maybe something that you weren't, you weren't envisioning for yourself. So we have other hobbies or I'm trying to help you find other hobbies. Maybe someone I talked to on the show, I've, I've got... How many 150 something past episodes here that you can go find on the Geek Therapy Radio podcast? Um, you just Google search Geek Therapy Radio, Johnny Hamburger, you'll find that, or geektherapyradio.com, even easier. I've got so much stuff in the backlog that I've talked about on this show. But if there's something that sparks 
an interest in you. Like I was saying before, it all the way up to, you know, clinical depression, but even just the doldrums of life. There's something that can give you hope, that can give you a reason to to get off work and something to go home and be excited for, not just, of course, <laughs> going home to see your wife and kids. That's obviously nothing's going to compare. You know, as much as I talk about Legos, and I know that the plural for Legos is Lego. Don't light me up for that. If you want to light me up on the phones for mispronouncing Legos, you can't because it's Lego. Uh, but nothing, If you, even if you like Legos, if you build Star Wars uh, Lego sets, 3,000-piece Lego sets, once you have a kid and a family, of course, that kind of can take the back burner. There's nothing more important than your, than your wife and kids and your family. But let's not beat around the bush. Those Star Wars Legos are also pretty darn important to keeping you sane. We love, we love that little bugger, that little pooping and peeing explosion machine of Hansel and Gretel trail of poops. But once you put them down for a nap, you want to... You want to play with some Legos or play video games. If you're into video games, if you're into building gaming PCs, or maybe you're uh, maybe you're not part of the PC master race and you're still playing on consoles. I submit, Josh is in there laughing at that. Maybe I I submit though that there isn't there really isn't a war between. Sorry to get off on this tangent, but the PC master race and consoles. That is to say, if you game on a PC. That doesn't automatically make you better than someone who plays on a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One uh, S or whatever you have. It's just what you like. And I can see the benefit in the appeal of both. B-O-T-H, not both. Both. You come home, you want to crash on the couch, you want to grab that PS3 or PS4 controller. If you're still playing a PS3, I guess you can be. It's just much easier to get into. You don't have to boot up a computer. What A computer takes three seconds to boot now. That's not really an excuse. But there's way more ease just to plop back on the couch with a beer, fire up the PS4, and play some Ace Combat 7, which is what I have been playing so much recently, as my beautiful fiance can attest to. She's in the studio right now playing Tetris or something, rubbing the screen of something over there. I play a lot of Ace Com Combat 7, and I've been waiting for that for... Years. Is that bomb music I hear? Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> this timer's off in here. This, these are really slow seconds on my studio stopwatch. 713 212 5950. Call me up. Let's talk about your geek thing, your hobbies, your passion, or let's find something for you. Call me up. 713 212 5950. We'll be back in just a moment with more Geek Therapy Radio. Don't go anywhere. Which is what you are listening to right now. I am Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator. 713-212-5950. If you're listening right now tonight, March 2nd, 2019. And I just realized, does anybody spray Lysol on these mics? Because this smells like 100 people spit. Yeah, I'm not sure you uh, may want to look out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna think about it. I'm gonna keep a, a couple inches distance from this microphone. It smells like somebody else's pillow. You know what somebody else's spit smells like? Yes, we all know that. Let me paint the picture. Let me let me set the stage here. Now, welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I am your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Thanks for joining me tonight. Texas Independence, March second. I was talking to Sarah on the way up here, way to dinner. Which, by the way, I right before we walked in the studio tonight, I, I put half a pizza in my guts. Jalapenos, pepperoni, and hot sauce. Which maybe wasn't the best choice for going on the air live your very first time. That sounds like a lot of heartburn, man. <laughs> heartburn is the least of my worries right now. There, I may have to put my hand up and say, play a quick, you know, play a long break here so I can hop out. No, I'll be fine. I was going to talk about Texas independence, and why am I talking about sprinting to the bathroom? Live radio, no safety net, no adult diapers either. Texas independence, 
March 2nd, 1836. What I was talking to Sarah about was that I think a lot of us Texans, and I should preface this by saying, I am a through and through born and raised blood Texan. I was born in San Antonio, just miles from the Alamo. I was born here. I was raised here. But I'm also quite... I'm a geek about history. I'm not a historian. I don't know. I can't rattle off specific dates and specific people, you know, willy-nilly off the top of the hat. I'm not a savant in that way. But I am fascinated by history. I did poorly in school. <laughs> I didn't do that poorly. I passed, obviously, but I did well enough to become a radio host. I don't let that sink in for a second. What kind of caliber? Where's the bar set to be a radio host? C's get degrees, baby. But I did well in history. I got A's and B's in, in history because I just I found it fascinating where we were and where we're going. So here in Texas, like most other states, you learn your state history. And for a few years, I don't know, in Virginia, Sarah's from, Virginia is a very historic state, though. I was about to say maybe. Rhode Island spends two days on Rhode Island history. I don't know. Virginia probably you can you can major in Virginia history for sure, definitely. Uh, but here in Texas, we take a few years of Texas history. Even in college, it's it's a required course to take uh, history, and most of us choose even more Texas history. But one thing that's fascinating to me is you have a lot of folks around here who are are very gung-ho about Texas independence, and it's a very cool thing. Do not get me wrong. We are the Lone Star State. We are the only state with a Lone Star because we were a republic for almost 10 years. We were shy by just one month. We rejoined. We got re-annexed by the United States in uh, 1846 in February, and we declared our independence about 10 years before that in 1836, March 2nd, 1836. Those 10 years, I'm just going to call it 10 years, were not daisies and roses and honey in the land of milk and honey or whatever you call it for Texas. It was actually pretty bad. It turns out, a quick side note is that France was one of our only allies back then. I know a lot of a lot of us Texans like to, and it depends on how macho you are, you like to kind of, we kind of rip on France for, for a lot of good reasons, I'll, I'll give you that. But back when we were independent for 10 years or so, France was one of our only friends, our only allies, the only, one of the only nations in Europe, or the first nation in Europe definitely to recognize the sovereignty of Texas. But back to what I was getting at. And we'll, by the way, call in 713-212-5950 if you want to talk about some other cool stuff. Are you building a computer? Are you building a rocket? Do you like RC cars? Are you an electrician? Is there something you're really geek about? Do you like Star Wars, Star Trek? Call me and we'll talk about that. But back to Texas Independence Day history because that's what today is for another hour and a half. It wasn't the land of milk and honey around here. It turns out that being a part, being a United State of the United States of America came with a lot of perks. So, while we declared ourselves independent from Mexico and the United States back then in 1836, that just means we had a lot of problems on all of our borders and within the interior that we could not get U.S. government federal help with. It's, it's, it's very great to be independent, and it was, it's a very cool part of our history, but there were things we were... Native Americans back then, that's, I don't need to say that that was, that was an issue back then. Part of Manifest Destiny and the railroad is going across and we were having a hard time dealing with the, the nation. The United States was having a hard time dealing with uh, Native Americans. I won't go into all of that dark chapter, but let's just say that Texas being independent with, with no help from the United States and certainly no help from Mexico, we had our hands full. We had a very bad time maintaining our republic for those 10 years. So for the liter you know, the entire 10 years, we were virtually, I don't want to say begging, because Texans don't beg, don't get me wrong, but we were very much appealing to the United States to, hey, help us out. And the United States said, you want to, you made this bed. You made, the you have to, you, you have to sleep in the bed that you made. So it was very hard for us to get the help, but... Fortunately, however you look at it, in 1846, we rejoined the United States. We got the help we needed to 
to to coexist. Coexist was a, is a bad word. Is, is a bad term. Just we didn't coexist with the Native Americans. We're we're not gonna let's let's get off that kind of dark chapter right now. But it was it was difficult. So now you know the basic history behind Texas Independence Day. Maybe there's a lot of transplants in Houston. My fiance, we're getting married in two weeks. She's a transplant. So there's a lot of people here that may know, may have seen in their Facebook feed and their social media posts that it's Texas Independence Day. It's an excuse to get drunk. Every day is an excuse to get drunk. It's rodeo time in Houston, baby. I bet you the rodeo's lit tonight. Texas Independence Day at the rodeo. Did you go to the rodeo today? Call me up, 713-212-5950. Tell me about that. What'd you see at the rodeo? Apparently the bulls there have really... No, I shouldn't talk about there. Talk about that. All right, I'll I'll keep it. Yeah, so I bet <laughs> I bet the rodeo is pretty lit on Texas Independence Day. What do we have coming up? May fifth, Cinco de Mayo. I just thought about that. The fifth of May. Yeah, Sarah's telling me that's Cinco de Mayo. That's what it, that's what it stands for. So yeah, you've seen Texas Independence Day scrolling through your Facebook feeds and your social media feeds, and now you know a little bit more about that. On Geek Therapy Radio, I call myself the mental curator because I am not an expert in any one subject. I will show you around this museum of the mind, show you different exhibits here and there, and I will talk about it. I'll come up with stories and neat things about whatever exhibit I'm bringing up. But that's where you come in on social media and on YouTube, Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube. You can call in on the last Saturday of every month. I know today's not, this is the first Saturday. But going forward, the last Saturday of every month is going to be live here on Geek Therapy Radio. But that's where you come in to help the mental contributions. Maybe I'm hitting a nerve with you, a nerd nerve. And you want to jump in and school, not just me, because I'm willing to be schooled. That's part of being a geek and being curious. If you know more about a subject than I do, and you probably do, talk to me and let's discuss it and let's share knowledge. There's so much misinformation being spread. Geek Therapy Radio is an oasis in the desert of politics, I like to say. Nothing wrong with politics. I'm not going to uh, step on any toes by saying this. Politics has, in political radio and political discourse, absolute has a place on talk radio. Let's not let's not exaggerate that point, but it has a place on talk radio. I am just trying to make the point that whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, we all love Star Wars, we all love Star Trek, we have so much more in common with each other than our differing politics. Politics, if we're just human totem poles, politics makes up our toenail. There's so much more that makes us who we are. I have this thought experiment. Uh, Josh, am I good on time? Do I have like 30 seconds? All right. I have this thought experiment. I'll get into the thought experiment in the next segment. It's, it's very fascinating. 713-212-5950. Call me up. Geek Therapy Radio. I am your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. 713-212-5950. It'd be cool to talk to you. But uh, other than that, talk to you in a few minutes. See you on the other side. Houston sounds good everywhere. Okay, Google, play KPRC on iHeartRadio. I told you, I got the jams here on Geek Therapy Radio, that 80s synth wave. You can call it synthwave. That, that's kind of weirds me out because the 80s came and went. But now synthwave is more EDM style, I think. Way more. Did speakers just not have the bass in the 80s? Like, Joe, hop on here. You're uh, not 15. Well, look, uh, look, you're you're in my wheelhouse. I mean, you know, you, you take me right into Tron and Blade Runner and Total Recall and, and all that with uh, with this thing, you know. But real quick, James, you just called into the radio show. Call back. I don't know why the line <laughs> jumped off, but call back eight uh, seven one. I've had to get my own phone number seven one three two one two five nine five zero. Yeah, that'd be good. I, you know, I've I've actually done done that before, you know, on social media. So if you get a few calls, you know. give up. Yeah, my phone number. <laughs> I'll, I'm not even. You see, you know what? People are such good detectives, and Joe don't go anywhere unless you had a I don't know. tabletty stuff. No, I'm fine. 
people on the internet are so good at sleuthing. Not even I'm not even talking hackers, like full on hackers sitting there with their Commodore 64s hacked into the Matrix. I'm talking just I it may be uh, the iGen, uh, the i generation, I guess, people born who are born with a screen in their hand, born with high speed internet. Yep. Uh, they are so good at sleuthing. If I gave the first I feel like if I gave the first two digits of my phone number, which in Houston it's very easy to guess, it's very common phone number, but if I just gave those first two numbers and they knew my name... Uh, you know, they'll write up an algorithm just to you know, fire off the right, you know, they'll, or dial it. them all and, and cross them off until we get to you. I said something uh, uh, a few years ago on uh, uh, I think what website was Imager or something like that, and I was just kind of venting well, I didn't use any names. I was talking about my dad, who had recently died. Say, so, hey, if you're going through a hard time, my dad died and recently, and it's a hard time and everything like that. If, if you need a shoulder, have any words or anything like that, I didn't put. I thought I didn't put any sort of, in, you know, conspicuous information in there. They, people were sending me private messages. Are you Johnny Hamburger? Was your dad Alan Hamburger? Like, oh my goodness, how did you? And I and I, I guess in that case it's kind of uh, it's easier to, to to see that happen after after it happened I was first I was shocked how did you find this but after thinking about that with what little information I gave them my dad was a local uh, news anchor here for since from 1989 to 19 or early 2000s and so I, they just put hamburger. And they just Googled hamburger, and I guarantee you it just came up. But what was creepy, what was creepy is that, uh, are you about to say something, Josh? I was just going to say, I've been able to find information. Like, all you really got to do is either know names or you find, like, one of their usernames and combine stuff and just everything opens up. It's very creepy how search engines can make you find a lot of information on people. It's it's nuts. So so what what creeped me out is that they were they were started listing off my my brothers and my sister. And this person was it was a wake up it was kind of a welcome wake up call for me that the person was was uh, cool about it. He said, "Look, you may think that you didn't give away much information, but here's what I found about you in in 10 seconds listing off uh, names and addresses and stuff like that. They said you just got to be careful. Just be careful with what you put online. As, even if you think you're being discreet about it, somebody will. Not, they don't even have to be a hacker. They can just find it. What's up, Joe? I got a question coming in. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, to your earlier, you know, uh, teeing up. It's coming on social, so they're just maybe not. He's not uh, comfortable calling in, but he's gonna, he's Texas us here, it's uh, all which good. is fine. That's what it's for. Yeah. Um, what do you know about the SpaceX launch? Occurred this morning. Ooh. Okay. So I don't. Um, off the top of my head, SpaceX Crew Demo One lifted off this morning, and it was a big deal. And there's all sorts of pictures of Elon Musk on Twitter. And it, I'm not going to get too sidetracked on Elon Musk. We can talk about Elon Musk in a minute because he's a fascinating character. But what this space launch signifies, uh, Crew Demo One lifts off. It is a return from the for the United States to put. Uh, manned space missions in orbit bring 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 people to the space station and beyond because for those of you who aren't aware we haven't the united states has not has not put a person into space in i want to say several years 10 years or so we've been hitching a ride with the russians and maybe somebody else but we the united states we have stopped putting people into space which is it pains my heart that that had to happen. Um, United States, we 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 weren't the first um, we weren't the first in space, but we were the, we put the uh, man on the moon. We put the first humans on the moon. We put the first humans in a lot of different capacities in space, and chimps and dogs and everything else. But it was a kind of a core value of United of, of NASA that we be the world leaders in space exploration. So Elon Musk saw that NASA had stopped putting people, you know, into space and said that's that that just won't do. I am the biggest geek that's ever lived and I'm a billionaire, so I'm going to start putting people in space. Now, this launch did not put a person in space. It was a dummy. But it paves the path for future launches for United States to start putting 
people back in space. And I think that's really cool. Elon Musk, if you guys don't remember, that uh, Tesla Roadster that he first put in orbit, that's still up there. You can still see that. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure this whole thing was just to prove they can go into space with a basically a human you know, weight and everything. And right. Bring it back safely. And if that goes smooth, then they're going to be able to actually start p- getting people back out there. Absolutely. A human analog. If we want to make it if we want to make it to Mars, we have to make it back to the moon first and then go from Mars beyond that. We have to start making going to the moon fairly routine before we go to Mars. And I think we're on a 25 year timeline uh, to Mars. But that's really cool that uh, Elon Musk is doing that. It, he's a, a rich nerd with billions of dollars and it's awesome. Uh, can I work this mouse over here? I want to talk to, will you help me out, James or uh, Josh? I want to talk to Dump Truck Dan on line one. Dump Truck Dan, my goodness, you're my what? first caller on Geek Therapy Radio. What's up? Well, I'm, I, I believe I was your first caller when you first started working at that radio station, too, wasn't I? I will let some people behind the curtain. I haven't, I've been a phone screener for other shows for, for a while, for almost 10 years now. And I have talked to Dump Truck Dan he, on uh, oh Outlaw Dave show. I want to say Michael Berry, uh, back when Matt Patrick was here. Garfield. Rest in peace. Garf, yeah, Garf. So, yeah, they, they gave me the keys to the station, Dump Truck. So, it, it's kind of like the first time you drove a Dump Truck. This is I'm I'm driving the dump truck of talk radio right now, and it's we're barreling yeah. down the freeway. <laughs> well, I just wanted to call and say congratulations. I mean, I've kind of you know I've kind of been there right along with you, uh, you know. So that that means but, a lot. That that really means a lot to me, Dan. Can I can I ask you uh, uh, one question? Since it is Geek Therapy Radio, can I ask you one thing before you go? Okay. What? It's, you can ask me it, anything you want. It's he not scared. <laughs> it's nothing that's going to make us hit the, hit the dumb button or anything like that. Dan, w- to what are you a geek about? What what's some of your hobbies or anything that you kind of do outside of work? Work can be uh, one of your geek things, but is there a hobby you have? Maybe puzzles or pff, well, art? Well, I I really enjoy cross. I mean, uh, not crossword jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. I like uh, I like word search puzzles a lot. My used to. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> My fiance is fist, fist pumping to the word searches. She loves word searches. Geek. That's good geek therapy. Yeah, my my youngest brother was getting married, and my mom and my two little girls were. My mom was in the passenger seat, and my little girls were in the back seat. My mom's sitting over there doing a word search, and I'd just look over there and I'd say, "Which one are you looking for?" And she'd say it, and I said, "There it is." Just <laughs> I'm driving. I'm driving down the Western Kentucky Parkway at about 75, 80 mile an hour. If you're if you're looking at the word search. Did you, are you in a Tesla? Does it have that autopilot feature? I think you're I, abusing it. I, well, I I just I have a, a knack for look looking at word uh, letters like that, and I can see the word I'm looking for, and I'm. I really, I've always been really fast at it. Now, uh, I just kind of wondered that Tesla floating around up there. Yeah, it, would that be kind of like, uh, like sunken treasure? If I can go up there and get it, can I keep it? You know what, dump truck? I'm, I'm sure that Elon Musk would have no problem if you fired something off in your backyard and went up there and got that roadster. If that were me, if I was Musk, I'd be like, if you grab my car out, you know, hundred thousand miles off in space. I, you can take it. I would probably give you a brand new one too, because that one's been fried by the sun and by cosmic rays and everything like that. But yeah, that'd be treasure. And if you brought it back, it might. You know, you're giving me an idea here. If this radio thing doesn't work out, I might search for that treasure because if I bring that back, that thing's got to be worth at least two hundred dollars. Uh, at least uh, I would and, say more. And, fit, and fifty yeah. cents, maybe. Wow. Two fifty. Yeah. All right, dump truck. That's <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves here. That's oh. that might be a little bit too much here. But anyway, but no, I, it just really, my mom got aggravated. She turned her back to the door so I couldn't see the puzzle because I did that like about six times in a row. I said, there it is. Awesome. And I'm driving. I was driving. So anyway, that's one of my weird weirdnesses, I guess you'd say. It's, that's your, uh, yeah, that's one, that's one of your geekdoms. You can find words. You can look at cr- words all jumbled up on a page and, and find find wor- find find words there. W- what seems like just a jumbled mess of grammar Dump truck can find meaning and, in. It's like it's like tea po- leaves. And, well, yeah, and being poor, I always had to fix my own cars, you know. So yes, <laughs> dump truck. Did you, to, did you did you know I that to, I have a DeLorean? You you do have a DeLorean? Yeah. You ever worked on any of them? 
No, I got to drive one once back uh, in 1982, 83. Yeah. I got to drive one. That's, yeah, that, was, that's when they're brand uh, new. They're, uh, they're, they're pretty neat. They're not going to win any drag races, that's for sure. But it is the Back to the Future car, and of course, I grew up with Back to the Future, and I had to get a DeLorean, and that's my geek cred right there. That's my geek street cred for sure. Yeah, yeah. I saw one up, up oh, several years ago. I saw one up around Lake Houston. Up there, way out there on the Beltway, like the way out there by Lake Houston on the Beltway, we're, one time, sir. We're gonna go um, to bre- we're gonna go break here in a second. But Dump Truck, uh, Delorean Motor Company is based in Houston now. The world uh, headquarters for restorations and, and and rebuilds and all that and service is right there in Humble. So that's probably why you saw it on Beltway eight around uh, Lake Houston. I, I've taken mine there. So and there's a, probably about thirty there at any given moment. Cool. All right. Well. Yeah. Congratulations, Johnny. Have a good day, and I'll I'll keep listening for you when you're live. All right. Thanks, Dump Truck. Tell your friends, man. That's going to do it for this segment of Geek Therapy Radio. I shouldn't say that's going to do it because that makes you think the show's over. No, it's only 1045 here in Houston, Texas. There's plenty more Geek Therapy Radio to come. 713-212-5950. Let's talk about geek Ish. I said ish. You don't have to hit the dump button. More Geek Therapy Radio coming up just one moment. Don't go anywhere. Get the real dirt on issues while you're cleaning up the dirt. Alexa, play KPRC 950 on iHeartRadio. I'm going to wait for the drop. I just picture like a 1980-something Ferrari 308 cruising down Miami, the ocean to the right or left of it. Magnum P.I. car, for anyone listening who did not grow up in the 80s. That's the only Ferrari that that I ever wanted alongside the DeLorean. The 308 isn't really that fast at all. And here's the thing about classic cars in general, because because people... and we'll, we'll get to more stuff. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio, by the way. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. If you want to talk about old 80s cars or whatever, 713-212-5950. 713-212-5950. What's up, Josh? No, I was just going to say, I watch a lot of Twitch streams, and there's a guy there named Dr. Disrespect, and he has the same sounds, and I just keep thinking about his stream at the same time, because he's all synthy and 80s vibes and everything as well. It's it's really cool. So when I first started Geek Therapy Radio, I didn't have the intro by uh, um, John B. Wells. John B. Wells does the voice for Coast to Coast AM. Coast to Coast AM is why I got into radio. I found it on the dial when I was 12 or 13 years old, laying in bed, couldn't sleep, and I just wanted to hear a voice on the radio. I didn't want to hear uh, music or anything like that. I just want to hear people talking, and it scared I can I can say piss. It's way past the watershed, and we're not in the UK. I can say the P word here. It scared the piss out of me every night. But it was the most glorious thing I've ever ever heard. I never heard anything on the radio like that before. And I was like, I want to that that kind of sparked me to to want to get into radio. My dad said, Don't get into radio. Well, he didn't forbid me or anything like that. He just says, You might want to consider maybe being an engineer or an accountant or something like that. Something that's a lot safer because the broadcast media wasn't the same as it was when he wrote the wave from the uh, late 60s to late 2000s. He, he thought the ship had sailed. And in, in many ways, he's right. But this is my geek therapy, talking on the radio and helping out other geeks to find their geek thing and encouraging other geeks with whatever they've got going on in their life. I said I wanted to touch on one thing, and then, Joe, and I'll hop to you, about the word searches. Dan, uh, Dump Truck Dan brought up the word searches and that he could just glance over going 175 on the freeway and, and find a word that he said. Um, I would find words that weren't supposed to be there, and they were usually naughty. And me saying that, I guarantee you, whoever's listening right now, that peaked up their antennas because I guarantee you, you did the same thing. I guarantee you that when you got a word search in elementary school, you <laughs> you you uh, like highlighted the word weenie or something like that. You try to sneak it in there. You find the word wiener or, or peen or, <laughs> or butt, and you circle that. And the teachers, that's not a word. Yes, it is a word. I found a word. Yeah, you got to get credit for it. No, you just, you got to get detention for that. Got to call your parents about these words you're circling. It's like a uh, uh, ink blot test, except for words. Uh, okay, before I say anything stupid, Joe, what were you gonna? Well, I did. I did want to let you know the um, 
your music does remind me of Far Cry Blood Dragon. Very good uh, modern game that's like, you know, kind of an homage to the 80s, too. Josh is like headbanging in agreement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, also, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, iGens uh, mm-hmm. being bored with screens in, in their hands. So I got a couple uh, comments, people asking if you think that's good or bad. But before uh, I let you answer that, I want also yeah. I want to also tee you up on why that that could be good or bad. Mm-hmm. All week, uh, we've been having a ton of web traffic on all our websites: Buzz, Sunny, KBRC, KTRH, uh, about this Momo challenge. Mm-hmm. This is a um, some sculpture art project from years ago. Somebody who not was not involved in what's happening today. Their 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 sculpture of just some like crazy looking character I has see. been spliced yeah. into children's videos put up all over the internet Creepy. you know you're you're i'm a parent you're a parent you know or, or parents out there i, I might you, be so. you, you uh you know you 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 two you, we're married <laughs> after well, course, we're married that's what i just okay i'm sorry well derailed. you i meant the you the listeners out there yeah that are, you anyway, pointed to me but okay you, you uh <laughs> uh you know you search for peppa pig or something you, you push a random video and then this character pops up and then tells these kids to like you know uh, hurt themselves or yeah. you know so Horrible. Have you heard about this? Thoughts on this? How can how can people protect their kids from this? I I've heard about that, and I the moniker in my mind I've kind of given it is is uh, mo 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 problems just because it seems and it's not it's not a light thing, but it's just something that popped in my head. I'm a geek; things pop in my head. I think it's 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 horrible, and I to, to me because like I said, in due time, I will be a parent, and to me that just it's extra motivation for parents to be aware of what their kids are looking at on tablets. We're going to end the show in a few minutes here, but, you know, to get serious kind of for a second, if your kid has a tablet, I promise you by the time that they're five, six, seven years old, they've seen boobies and worse, way worse, with zero context, absolutely zero context to what they're seeing. So this mo 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 problems thing is is horrible. They're they're splicing it into kids' videos, and apparently this thing is telling them uh, not 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 just to commit suicide, but how to do it. It's horrible. And the way they pepper these things in there, you could look over at your kid's screen and see Peppa Pig or whatever like that, and then look back to what you're doing, and that thing f- flashes for just a, a second or two with the parents not even knowing it, and it's giving these kids not even subliminal message. It's pretty intense. The, the creepy looking face on that thing. So to to go back to what I was saying, it's just it it's more. It it gives me kind of a a, a fear in a, in a, it just a re-energized awareness that if I'm going to be a parent in the in the in the future, however distant that is. That I need to be aware of what my kids are seeing all the time. Josh, what's up? Well, I was just gonna say I uh, saw a statement by YouTube, and they actually their algorithm can apparently pick it up pretty well. Yeah. So a lot of people are saying they're seeing this on YouTube when apparently that may not be the case. So if that if it really isn't popping up on YouTube, which I can't say it's not for every video, but I would tell these parents make sure your kids are using the YouTube Kids app. Yeah. And instead of letting them maybe just go on Google and search, you know, Peppa Pig actually find these Disney apps or Nickelodeon apps, whatever it is. Right. Because you know there's going to be no chance that they can find that in those situations. Exactly. And um, what was I going to say about that? Oh, YouTube has had a, a, a kind of a related but separate problem with... Uh, why are we getting so deep on Geek Therapy Radio right now that we can do that? <laughs> uh, there's a pedophiles on the kids' videos. And th- these aren't videos of any sort of... Uh, you know, pedophilia or anything like that, any sort of videos like that. It's just video. It's like kids in commercials and people in the comment sections apparently put in like zero colon 33, like it, pause it there to, to see a kid, whatever. It's horrible. And I think with all the flack that YouTube has been getting over the years, like with Logan Paul and PewDiePie and all the, it makes building a YouTube channel so hard, which is why I appreciate all my subscribers, Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube plug right there. Um, it makes it very hard to grow a channel, but I think YouTube has handled this situation regarding kids uh, wonderfully, as wonderfully as they can. They just disabled comments on any video with children in them, period. Some people put stuff on the internet and social media just publicly of their kids, and I'm just like, I. that puts the fear of God into me. I do not want, I don't even want to put a whole lot of my face on the internet, of me on the internet. So, especially kids, what are you pointing at? 
all the cam. Well, I'm on the internet right now. There's three cameras looking at my face right now. But I'm I'm an adult. I know what I'm doing. I uh, I think you can see me from the waist up here. So there's nothing that compromising of me, anyways. But you never know who's out there. You never know who's watching. You never know who's gonna try to get to your kids before you can. I found this this challenge uh, uh, recently also this week that uh, there's some other challenge about uh, for, uh, for kids or teenagers to disappear for 48 hours, like the 48-hour oh, yeah, yeah, challenge of disappearing. Yep. Holy crap, that's terrifying. And there's already been cases of parents filing a uh, missing children's report about that. These, what they don't realize, that the, these kids, they're you know, 15, 16, younger than that, they don't realize that they're given the bad guys a 48 hour head start to never finding them again. So let's say that some kid is fi- uh, doing this 48 hour challenge or whatever, and you, d- you, you know these creeps are out there. They're going to say, oh, this kid's doing the challenge. Scoop them up. 48 hours before anyone is going to, because their parents might say, oh, they're just doing the 48 hour challenge there or whatever. Nope. That you, you could be out of the country within two hours. You can be in the airport, checked in on a plane out of the country to God knows where in the world. Don't let your kids do the 48 hour, 48 hour challenge. This isn't the ice bucket challenge. It's not innocent. It's not, well, Tide Pods is just stupid. The 48 hour challenge is it, you're, you are risking your life in a real way. And it's just terrifying, and I, I gotta, I, I gotta think that the I generation is is more susceptible to. When is the I generation born? Two thousand and onward, or two thousand five? What's up, Josh? No, I was just gonna say also again about these tablets you mentioned earlier. Parents, I don't think realize that these young kids could pick it up pretty quickly. So if you're gonna have, let them have these apps and use them. Also lock these other yeah. apps so they can't go on like a Facebook or Twitter and see these other things because there are certain things like YouTube Kids that. They're not going to see that. It's the, when they get outside of that where the problems arise. I, I guess to summarize the sentiment, parents, please be more proactive in monitoring what your kids are, are watching. I can't tell you how to parent or what to do, but I know that when I'm a parent, being fully aware of what the internet has to offer, I'm going to be, it's going to be a balancing act between overbearing or controlling and just making sure that they're safe on there because things like I guess they can they can be on an airplane to Malaysia in less than two hours in the air nothing you it's just it's horrifying to think about that's that's kind of yeah we can do a whole show on on generational differences on iGen and uh uh, what am I? I'm a millennial, technically. I found out recently. I'm a millennial. Joey, I, I was born '82. You're probably born yes. in like 1945 or something like that. You're Gen X. You're definitely Gen X. Anyways, <laughs> Joey, you know, you you just remind me of a of a <laughs> Joe Satriani. It just popped into my head. What's up? I was gonna... one minute. Okay, I've got one minute left on the show. He's saying, "See, this is live radio." Normally, I could edit something that out, uh, like that out. Every, the three three weeks out of the month, I'm I'm doing it recorded. I can prepare these nice segments and everything. I don't have to fall on my face like I just did right there. But that's the beauty of live radio. That's why I like to do this. Thank you for listening to the first live broadcast of Geek Therapy Radio here on KPRC 950 AM and all over social media. How many tablets do I got to point to? The last Saturday of every month, live Geek Therapy Radio right here on KPRC 950. AM. Until then, geektherapyradio.com. Subscribe to all the social media, and I'll see you guys next time. We'll just let this bump play out. Thank you so much for listening. Listening.